everybody, thank you for tuning in to today's video. So today I'm going to be trying to make some miniature pies for my 12th scale Tudor doll's house and also some slightly larger versions for my mum's doll's house which is a slightly larger doll's house. So I'm using polymer clay today. If you've watched my previous videos you'll know that I've made a couple of items out of polymer clay although it is still quite new to me. So my polymer clay is really hard and needed conditioning before I used it. So I just added some Vaseline and massaged it in until the consistency was nice and stretchy and elasticy. To change the colour of the clay I scraped in some chalk from some soft pastels. So I used some yellows and some browns and I massaged it into the clay until it changed the colour to a doughy colour. To decide the size of my pie, I took my miniature roast pheasant that I previously made out of the doll's house and I also took one of the plates out of the doll's house so that I could line them up next to my pie as I made it. I decided to use some tin foil to make the filling of the pie because this pie is going to be a full pie, it's not going to have a slice cut out of it. So the tin foil helped me to get the correct shape, so I started with a bit of a sphere shape and then flattened it slightly. I then put some corn flour onto the tin foil and the clay just to stop them from sticking and I flattened out the clay and started to wrap it around the tin foil. Initially I was going to make an open topped pie so you'll be able to see here that the top was open but I then changed my mind and decided to wrap this clay all around the foil to completely cover it. I then used a second piece of polymer clay and popped it underneath this part and pulled up the edges. Now unfortunately my hands in front of the camera here, not great filming, sorry about that, but hopefully you understand what I'm doing. So I'm just pulling up the sides and the top is already covered because I'd originally covered the whole piece of tin foil in the first piece of clay. I then used one of my tools that's almost got like a pin at the end of it to crimp the edges and to also make a little hole in the top of the pie so that it looks a little bit more authentic and then it was ready to be baked in the oven following the instructions on the polymer clay packet. As well as this pie, so this is it after it's been baked, as well as this one I made a larger version for my mum's doll's house and I also made two that were more of a rugby ball shape because I have been told that the pies in the Tudor era were often this diamondy rugby ball shape. So I've made one large one for my mum's doll's house and one smaller one for mine and I popped a little leaf pattern on the top as well as the crimping around the edges. So these have been baked in the oven and left to cool and now it's time to add some colour. To add some colour to my pies I initially scraped some more of the chalk pastel into my palette and tried to brush the colour on, however it didn't adhere at all to the polymer clay. So I then added some water, but I didn't like this effect either because it kind of pooled and ran off the polymer clay. So I then tried my liquid watercolour paint. I am aware that acrylics paint over polymer clay in quite a solid colour, but I didn't want to use acrylics because I wanted almost like a glaze effect. So I used this liquid watercolour and that worked perfectly. These liquid watercolours are from a shop called Sostrian Green which I found in Manchester and they do have a website as well. They've got some really beautiful colours. This one's an orangey yellow. I deliberately allowed some of the paint to pool in the creases on the pie because I wanted it to look as if the juices were oozing out of the pie and I also wanted it to have some slightly darker areas as if it had baked a little bit longer in those areas uh, in the oven. I gently moved these pies to one side to let them dry and I had also made another little pie which I'll show you in a second. But first I just wanted to show you this one. I've decided to leave this without any paint on it because this is going to go into my kitchen rather than the banqueting hall to look like a pie that is still being prepared. 
before it's been baked in the oven. So this little pie here is another one that I made. Unfortunately, I didn't film it as I was making it. I actually made this one really quickly whilst my oven was preheating. So this one, I started with a bit of a sphere shape and I flattened it a little bit and then I made the crimped edges around the top before then cutting a wedge out. I then used my tool that has the pin at the end to make the inside of the pie quite rough and as you can see here I then painted that inside bit with some pinky reddy brown that was slightly darker than the colour that I'd used for the pastry casing on the outside because I wanted it to look as if this wedge of pie had been cut out of the middle. This is just a small little pie, I'm thinking it's like a meat pie, it's also like a pork pie. Um, so yeah, that's going to sit nicely next to my whole pies. Whilst that was drying, I decided to make some serving plates for my pies. So as I said before, some are going to go onto my banqueting table and some on my kitchen table in my Tudor doll's house. So all I did was took this little scrap of plywood and used a Stanley knife to cut off some rectangles, all different shapes and sizes. After cutting out all of the rectangular pieces, although I didn't get it on video, I did round off the corner edges just by chopping off the corners with the Stanley knife and then using some sandpaper to sand them down. After that I then painted some of them with the watercolour paint and some of them with some raw umber acrylic paint and then I left them to dry. So this is just a picture here of them before they'd been sanded and painted, I'll show you what they look like when they're finished when they are dry. By this point my house was looking a real mess, I had more than one project on the go at once, you'll notice to the left of the cat some other miniature pies that I will post in a different video. Whilst the heat chopping boards were drying I worked on the pie that was going to go into the kitchen, the uncooked one, so I stretched out some polymer clay ready to go into the oven because that's going to go onto the chopping board and then I decided to make a mini rolling pin. I made my rolling pin out of a kebab skewer, it had quite right angled edges so really carefully with a Stanley knife I scraped away from myself, um, safety first, to make sure that those right angled edges were smoother to make more of a cylinder shape and then I gave it a sand down. After that I then painted it initially in this colour but I did then paint over the top of it in raw umber acrylic to make it the same colour as some of the chopping boards. I then put some gloss onto the little pies that had finished drying. I didn't cover them completely in gloss but I focused on the area where I felt like an egg glaze might have been washed over the top. And I didn't gloss over this pie because obviously it wasn't meant to have been baked yet. I had already stuck it down to the chopping board with a little bit of Yoohoo glue and then I got some Pritt stick just to add some glue to the chopping board. I didn't want it to be too liquidy which is why I used the Pritt stick. And then I just used a scraping of a white soft pastel to give the illusion of a dusting of flour across the board. I then took the pieces of pastry that I'd baked in the oven and I did put a little bit of Yoohoo glue onto the bottom of these to hold them in place and I positioned them onto the chopping board along with my little rolling pin that I'd made earlier. So I now have my little pie that's going in the kitchen that's not yet baked and I have my two pies that are going to go to my mum's doll's house. So these are the slightly bigger ones. And then I also have my little pie that is whole and my little pork pie that's had a chunk cut out of it. And they're going to go onto my banqueting table. I was really pleased with how the miniature pork pie turned out. I'm so sorry that I didn't get any video footage of making it. I just did it whilst the oven was preheating. And I literally did it by getting a blob of clay and then just using my tool that's got the pin head on it to carve into it and make the texture. So when placing it in my doll's house I moved the roast pheasant to the back of the room because it was bigger so easier to see further away and I put the more detailed little pie at the front and this is what it looked like. 
I then removed this chicken from my kitchen because I actually made it from my mum's doll's house so it's time to give it to her and I replaced it with my miniature pie. I played around with the arrangement on the table of the kitchen and the angle that I positioned the pie at again so that you could see most of the detail from looking from the front of the doll's house. I'm really happy with how my pies have turned out. Please do let me know what you think and thank you for watching. Please do leave a comment if you want to. I read them all. I love reading them. Um, and hit subscribe if you've not already. Thank you and have a really nice day.